How's it going, everybody? Every year since my father got a late 2012 Mac Mini, he got it around the second quarter of 2013. Well, I was the one who suggested he get it because senior citizens really are more suited to use Apple products just because of the ease of use and lack of viruses. Every year, it's been updated regularly like clockwork by Apple during the third quarter of the year. I'm the one who does the up, who, who actually clicks upgrade and all that stuff, and it always works fine. But the past two years, I noticed the late 2012 Mac Mini, whenever it starts up, takes very long now. Once it's running, it runs very smoothly, but just to click a program to have it run, it's just really, really slow. Like the spinning beach ball would keep spinning. Now it's that time of the year again for OS X updates, and this year the update name is called Catalina. I read online that some people say, yes, while the late 2012 Mac Mini is still supported, and that's actually one good thing about Apple. They may cost a lot, but the lifespan is so long because they support their hardware with software yearly. My mom's iPhone SE, which came out the year of the 6S, it was still supported last year. In fact, even up to this year with iOS 13, but we already sold that last year to get the iPhone XR. But see, you see what I mean, right? Very old device still supported. Now, I saw online that it works fine and all that with Mac OS Catalina, but it's very slow, even slower than last year's what is it called? Mojave. For the past how many years I've been telling myself I'm gonna change that Mac Mini's hard drive to an SSD. I never did it because, well, it's still working fine. If it ain't broke, why fix it? All that stuff. And I'm not very confident with opening up a Mac. Now, I've built PCs before. I'm not an expert by any means, but at least PCs were meant to be modular, while Macs, I have changed actually the RAM in the late 2012 Mac Mini, but that was meant to be changeable. You could just open the back plate and then it, it was meant to be accessible. But the hard drive though, it's hidden, right? It wasn't meant to be user replaceable, but wasn't worth it to pay people to do it for such an old computer. And we may change the Mac Mini anyway next year. Just not worth it. I just thought I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. I might as well do it because why not, right? If I don't do it, it'll just be very slow and unusable. Anyways, it's just wor it's worth the risk. If I mess it up, well, maybe it's really time to get a new one. If I don't mess it up, then it's good for another year. This video is not going to be a tutorial on how to change it. You don't want to watch a tutorial for me changing it. There's a lot of cursing, a lot of mistakes. You just But I will link to the two resources I found most useful in the description below. This video is from the perspective of a regular person who is knowledgeable about tech but not necessarily an expert. The people who are comfortable enough to do stuff on their own if their instructions, not necessarily like you just get into it because of, you have a lot of stock knowledge, which I don't. I, I research a lot. I, I found two resources that I found most reliable. One is from MaxSales.com on YouTube. It was a video. Another is the guide of iFixit. It's a written guide online. They're both very good. Oh yeah, before I disassemble the thing though, I had to clone the hard drive, of course, to the SSD. Uh, the easiest way to do it is through a program called Super Duper. It's free, but if you want to have their advanced features like scheduled backups and all that, you can pay a small price of $28. I just got the free one because all I needed was to clone that one time. It's just point and click. You know, it's not like when I've, I've tried to clone Windows before with Acronis. Well, that wasn't that difficult either. There were a lot of things to click and figure out. Super Duper was very easy. It just two clicks, you choose the source, you choose the target, it's done. That's when I had to do the disassembly. I, I just want to bring up that in the comments of those two resources, those two resources both say that you got to remove the actual antenna cable from the Mac Mini, but comments say you don't have to do that. You can just push the antenna grate aside. You'll see it once you see the tutorials. They're right though. You, you don't have to remove the cable because someone like me, I'm very, I, I, I'm not really very mechanically inclined. Once I pry it open, I don't know if I could put it back. I'm glad I read those comments. Everything in those links, you could follow them. Just don't remove the cable of the actual antenna. Just You can just slide the grate. Anyway, I follow the instructions to a T. Lots of screws involved. You gotta have like special screwdrivers. These TORX, they look like a little star asterisk at the end. You gotta buy them. I got mine from Lazada, one of the biggest Southeast Asian online retailers, but you can buy them anywhere. Not very expensive. After I followed the instructions to a T, I reassembled the thing and I don't have b-roll of me doing that by the way it was too much pressure already and I had like my tablet open to the YouTube video I had the written guide on another screen and then I had the table lamp shining on the Mac so I could see stuff so I, I didn't want to have a 
camera overhead while I'm doing it and who knows if I could even do it successfully or I'm just gonna be cursing the whole time so it, I, I don't have b-roll of it but you know what reassembly I was able to do it but in the antenna grate there were four screws I was only able to fit three out of the four the final hole I couldn't align the two so I couldn't fit the screw in I was like, if, I'm pretty sure it's still gonna work with only three out of four screws in it. So I'm like, whatever, I just covered up the Mac Mini, the backplate. Late 2012 Mac Mini, the backplate is still easily removable and reassemblable. It's not like the 2014 Mac Mini where they sealed it in. I plugged it in, I booted up, crossed my fingers, and would you believe it, it just booted up straight up, no problems. It, it went in, all the user accounts were still there, all the programs were still there, it was like a it was like a miracle and it booted up faster than before and the spinning beach ball was gone so from there i up upgraded updated to mac os catalina which took a few hours because of the third world philippine internet by few hours i meant like nine hours and then when i woke up there was another patch or whatever a smaller two gigabyte file and that was it it was done i restarted and it was done so re remember i cloned it first well it was still in the old os 10 version mojave cloned it first and then i did the reassembly assembly of the hard disk i bought an ssd right i didn't buy an external case anymore because i have a dock a dock is more versatile and cheaper actually than buying like cases just for each drive you have this one can actually fit a 3.5 inch desktop size hard drive drive or a little one like the ones for Mac minis and laptops. So yeah, this is the old hard drive actually that I don't have the SSD anymore because it's inside the Mac but I plugged it in the same way as I did the Mac mini drive now here. So I stuck it in here and then one USB went into the Mac mini power just to keep it evenly supplied with power. Yeah, this is how I cloned it. Then I disassembled the Mac Mini and I stuck the SSD in, took out the old mechanical hard drive, closed it up. Yeah, one screw was left out. It was only after it booted up with a new SSD. That's only when I updated to Catalina, the 2019 OS X version. Because from what I read online, if you boot up the old hard drive of the 2012 Mac Mini into Catalina, if you upgrade it that way, it's gonna work. It is supported, but it's gonna be super slow and you're just gonna tear your hair out. So if I was gonna try to do it anyway, I'll just do it that way, right? So it booted up, I was able to upgrade to Catalina. It worked fine, like, like a charm. All the user accounts, all the programs are still there. Oh yeah, and one last thing. I saw online that if your Mac did not come with an SSD by default from the factory, so the older ones, right, the 2012 Mac minis that they didn't come with a SSD from before, you have to remember to enable something called trim. I'm not really sure what it, what it is, but if you have SSDs, you just gotta have the trim enabled. A lot of the guides on cloning and on the disassembly, reassembly, they don't mention that because they assume you know, right? It, those guides are for people who are in the know or already know stuff. I, I really don't know anything about these things. I just research and do it. I just wanted to say that you gotta enable this trim thing, which is very easy. I'm actually gonna link to the resource I used to, to find out about that trim thing. Very easy, all you have to do is to go to the about your Mac and click on system reports. We'll see that trim is not enabled if you have a 2012 Mac mini. And then you have to just go to your terminal and then type this one liner and then it's gonna ask you, yeah, you wanna do it and you click yes or you type Y and then that's gonna keep your SSD running smoothly. This is, I guess, uh, just a little vlog of my day and night. Disassembling, reassembling, cloning this Mac. It's a, the reason I found it necessary to make this little video is because you know, I, I just never did it before. It's my first time to do such an operation in a Mac. I've cloned before in Windows and the, it's, and I've you know transferred stuff and it's, and it's nothing to write home about. This is just unusual. It's, the easy part was actually the cloning. That's usually where I run into problems with Windows. Sometimes I clone it and it boots up and there are all these issues or whatever. But the easy part of Windows is just swapping the drives. It's not a problem. The, this is the opposite. The software part was like smooth, enabling this trim thing, whatever. I, at first I thought it was very difficult. I was like, oh, I have to type all these things, but it's not. The difficult part was the hardware, like the screwdrivers, all the little, I mean, that was the, it was like total opposite of my Windows experience. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next video. Oh yeah, so my father's Mac keyboard, Apple keyboard, we bought at the same time as the 2012 Mac Mini. Some buttons are already not super working. Well, just the enter button actually in the space bar because I think he used to put books or something on top of it. And I was researching online to buy a new one. And Apple, they don't sell like wired keyboards anymore. 
they just sell this very expensive wireless keyboard, which looks like good quality, but still very expensive, even for a wireless keyboard. And I'd rather have a wired keyboard just so you don't have to worry about charging and whatnot. Especially for senior citizens, it's difficult to remember these things and you gotta turn on and off the power button on the wireless keyboard. So I, anyway, I, I couldn't find the like first party wired keyboards anymore. I could find like secondhand ones, but they're still very expensive for secondhand. Like you don't know how dirty it is, right? So I was looking online and I just wanted to recommend this little keyboard. I am not obviously affiliated with them, but from this company called Mac Ally. This is a little plastic keyboard, but it's the same Apple keyboard with the keys. I know you could use a normal keyboard and then just then but if as a senior citizen you'll get confused because the command key, you know, it's just it's just better if the layout is ready like Apple so you don't have to have a learning curve for senior citizen. It's wired and it's okay price, although it's already higher than normal keyboards, so I just wanted to mention that.